G'day Curd Nerds, today we're making Morbier. Now Morbier is a French cheese and it is a bit of a funny one. It's, it's a cheese that has an ash line down the middle uh, and back in the old days, when they had copper vats, what they used to do, they used to make this cheese, Morbier, and they'd make the base first, because they didn't have enough milk in their vat, and then they'd get some of the ash from the bottom of the copper cauldron, and they'd sprinkle that over the top to stop the rind from drying out or over acidifying and going bad. And then the next day, they make the same cheese, and then they'd throw the curds on top and then press it. These days we don't have to do that. So what I've done is made just a single batch of cheese and split it into two lots of curd and made an ash line down the middle. It's also a washed rind cheese. So you'll see some brevi bacterial linens make an appearance and we'll be washing the outside of the cheese. Anyway, please join me on how to make Morbier. So first of all, sanitize all of your equipment I do that via boiling and all the plastic equipment I use vinegar. And the milk we're using today is Inglenook Dairy full cream milk and it's unhomogenized. So the ingredients for this cheese is 10 litres or 10.5 quarts of whole cow's milk, a quarter of a teaspoon of MA4000 series. I'm using MA4001 Mesophilic Culture. You'll need one thirty second of a teaspoon of geotrichum candidum, 1 64th of a teaspoon of brevi bacteria linens, 3 8 of a teaspoon or 2 millilitres of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, 3 8 of a teaspoon or 2 millilitres of single strength liquid rennet. I'm using IMCU 200 and that's diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. You'll also need some French ash or activated charcoal Plus, you're going to need a saturated 18% brine solution to salt your cheese with. So once you've finished pouring all of the milk into your pot, attach your thermometer and bring your milk temperature up to 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So once you've reached the target temperature, I'm just taking that pot off of my steamer uh, to stop the temperature going up any further. And then we're going to add the culture and the two moulds. First of all, I'm adding the MA4001 by, it's called Choose It by Danisco. Let's just sprinkle that all over the surface. And then I'm sprinkling over the Geotrichum candidum. And then the Brevia bacterium linens, which is the red mould you see on the surface of some cheeses, especially Morbier. So cover that up and we're going to allow the cultures and moulds to rehydrate for five minutes. So once five minutes is up, we're going to stir them back into the milk. Just check the temperature hasn't gone up, which is good. So I'm stirring for about a minute, maybe a minute and a half there. So cover back up again and we're going to allow them to ripen for 90 minutes. Or oh, that's an hour and a half. So once the ripening time is finished, we're going to just stir the cream that's floated to the top because I'm using unhomogenized milk, we're just back into the, into the milk. Now note I didn't add any cream to this recipe, it's just naturally floated to the top again. So once that's done, we're going to add the calcium chloride 
Just pour that in while you're stirring. And stir that for about a minute. So now we're going to add the rennet solution and just gently pour that in whilst we're stirring and then stir that for, you guessed it, no more than one minute. Okay, just still the milk and then cover that back up to start coagulation. So we're going to allow it to set in uh, 45 minutes. So 45 minutes later, we're going to check that for a clean break, and I'll just do that with my curd knife, pop it in at a 45 degree angle, then turn it, and if it looks nice and clean and doesn't look sloppy, then you're right to go. So using my curd cutter, I'm cutting that into two centimeter or three quarter inch cubes, just doing the horizontals there with my curd harp and with my curd knife, just do the vertical cuts. So do it one way, and then we're going to do it perpendicular to that cut. And that should give us some nice clean cubes. Now if you don't have a curd harp, then you can cut at a 45 degree angle to get the same effect. So cover that back up and allow them to heal for five minutes. Stops the curd going sloppy when you first store it. Uh, stir it, not store it. There we go. So you'll see a little bit of whey on the top. So we're going to stir the curds for 10 minutes whilst raising the temperature to 38 Celsius or 100 Fahrenheit. So we're warming up the curds as we go along. So if you see any big bits, uh, cut them with the side of the spoon like that and just ensure that they're all the same, even sort of size. So now we're at the target temperature of 38 in this shot you'll see that the curds have shrunk down to about the size of a peanut i would think so i'm going to cover that and allow the curds to settle for five minutes they'll settle down to the bottom making the next step easier In the meantime, heat up 5 litres or 5 quarts of non-chlorinated water to 38 degrees Celsius or 100 Fahrenheit. So using a second pot there, we're going to wash the curd. So first of all, we've got to remove uh, 5 litres or 5 quarts of whey. And I'm using that using a sanitised sieve and a measuring cup. So that's approximately five litres. I think I dipped out 19 cups, which works out to be uh, 4.75 litres. Until you can just see the curds, basically. Which you just can there. So we're going to replace that with the warm water I had before. So just pour that in. It's the same temperature, so you won't get any um, matting or anything like that. So just up to the line, and then we're going to stir that up to stop any matting. So what this does, it lowers the overall acidification of the curd. So we're going to stir and wash the curds for 10 minutes now. So like I said, it lowers the overall acidity and makes the cheese sweeter, if that makes sense. So just check after you pour the water in that the temperature is okay. It's 38.8. It'll drop down a little bit by itself because I haven't got the heat on. So that's fine. So I'm just going to perform the squeeze test now that I've stirred for that amount of time. Just squeezing the curd and if it breaks apart with your thumb, then it's good to go. It will press okay. So over to the draining area, we're going to transfer half the curds into each of the two colanders.
Now we're doing this so we can get that ash line in the centre of the cheese. So allow them to drain for 10 minutes and they will form a curd slab all by themselves. And once that's done, we're just going to loosely break up the curds into smaller pieces. So you grab your mould and I'm going to transfer half the curds just out the way. It's a solid slab. Use the cheesecloth and line the, ch the basket with the cheesecloth. And then we're going to add half the curds to the basket. Just breaking them into small pieces, popping it into the basket there. There we go. Now we need a flat surface to sprinkle the ash on, so I'm just giving that a quick, light press. So not too much, just enough to make a, a flat surface. So it's about 5 kilograms or 10 pounds for about 10 minutes only. You don't want to press it too hard. Okay, so once that 10 minutes is uh, over, you can see I've got my trusty gloves on. I'm going to remove the cheese from the press. Just flip it over because the flat surface is better on the bottom usually. And we're going to place that back in the basket with the cheesecloth, but we're going to spread it open so that we can sprinkle the ash on the surface. So you can see they've got a decent flat surface and we're going to sprinkle a fine layer of ash over the cheese. Now the best way to do this is to use a cheese, a, a tea ball and put the ash in it. So start at the centre and then work your way out. You don't really want to go all the way to the outside because you'll lose a little bit of the ash during the pressing process. So the measurement I'm using there, it's a quarter of a teaspoon. So, so far I've used two quarter teaspoons and I've got a fairly good covering there. Probably a little bit more to go to the edges a little bit better. Nope, that's it. That's all the ash it gets. Okay, so you can see there up the top uh, uh, right-hand corner, I've got the other curds. So we're going to fill the, uh, the basket with the remainder of the curds, trying not to disturb that ash layer. So I'm just gently sprinkling a initial little layer of curds there to make it easier to get the rest in. And hopefully because I'm using the gloves I haven't got too much ash on any of the other bits of curd. I just want that nice fine distinct line through the cheese. So fold the cheesecloth over and top with a follower because we're going to press the second half now. So into the press it goes. Now we're going to press it very lightly. So 4 kilograms or 8 pounds of pressure for 30 minutes is the initial. Now you can see some of the ash coming out. That's okay. Uh, as long as the way is running clear as well. We don't want cloudy way because you're pressing it, pressing it too hard. So after that initial time, we're going to take it out of the press and then gently turn it over. It is very fragile at this stage. You can see the ash line. That looks pretty cool. So same thing. We're going to apply a little bit more pressure this time. 11 kilograms or 25 pounds for one hour. So with my press, that means the spring is half closed. It's just an estimate. So after that hour, we're going to take carefully, not like that, carefully take the cheese out of the press and out of the basket. Flip it over again. 
You can see the curds are consolidating more. They look much nicer. And there we go. There's an action shot. The curds have not fully consolidated, but you get the general idea. The next pressing will sort it out. So back into the press again. So I'm just giving the basket a little bit of a wash under the tap because there's a lot of ash on it. Don't want it going over the rest of the cheese. So we're applying 11 kilograms or 25 pounds of pressure again for another hour. There we go. So I remove the cheese from the basket again and turn it over again. You can see the curds are getting a lot tighter and you're starting to get a, a final nice smooth rind on the cheese. Okay, fold the cloth over, pop the follower on top again and pop it back in the press. This time at a greater pressure, 22 kilograms or 50 pounds for two hours. So that for me, that's the spring totally closed up because it's a 50 pound spring. So after two hours, we're going to, guess what? Remove it from the press again. And from the basket. One last turn. Pop it back in the basket, fold the cloth over and pop the follower on top. So press at 22 kilograms or 50 pounds for two hours. So that's the last pressing. We're going to remove it now from the basket and the cheesecloth. And you can see that's nice and tight. Now we're going to rest it overnight in the basket and then lay the damp cheesecloth on top. Now because it hasn't been pressed for very long, it's quite um, flexible is what the cheese will be. So out of the press it's 1.172 kilograms. So you remove it from the basket the next day which is a bit difficult because it kind of stuck. There we go. Nice looking cheese. Nice cheese. Ash line too. Okay, so we're going to place it in the brine solution for three hours per uh, pound or 450 grams of cheese. So for mine, by having that initial weight, I figured out it would be about seven hours of brining for my cheese. So pop it into the brine, and with my one I just put the lid on, and as you can see there I've stated that I've brined it for seven hours. Now don't forget to turn it halfway through that time period, so for me that'll be three and a half hours to turn it over. So I've done the uh, the turning at the halfway mark and this is the completed brining. So remove it from the brine and place it into a ripening box. We're going to air dry it now. So we're going to air dry it for one day until the surface is fairly dry, which it will be because it's been brined. So just leave it in an open box like that. So. Um, before you do we go any further, we're going to make up a simple uh, wash of one teaspoon, sorry, one tablespoon of salt to one cup or 250 mils of water, cool water. And then we're going to add some geotrichum candidum, just a pinch, and some brevibacteria linens, just a pinch of that as well. And there's those two cultures, or yeasts, or moulds, whatever you want to call them. I think they're yeasts. So 
So make sure that you add the salt to the water first before you add the two yeasts slash molds um, because what happens, it actually breaks the cell walls of the yeasts if you add them just to plain water. You can have a little bit of salt in there apparently. Okay, so that goes the uh, Breviobacteria linens and then I've got the GI trichum just there. So the pinch is a 1 64th of a teaspoon. Very tiny amount. I'm using my mini measuring spoons to measure those out. So pop the lid on. So you do this a couple of days before you do the first wash. So one to two days. Just leave it on the side with the cheese. So you can see there she's air dried now. But we're going to leave it in the um, ripening box before we do any washing for two to three days to allow the, the yeasts to develop. You'll see that there, or you'll smell a slightly fruity or yeasty um, aroma and it'll be a little bit sticky to touch. So once that's happened, then we can wash, do an initial water wash of the cheese. Now I left it for about a week and you can see that it's prolifically grown geotrichum on the surface of the cheese, but that's okay. So after the first week, um, I simply washed it with cool water and allowed it to dry for a day. Just put a little bit more moisture into the rind before we start washing. So that's just non-chlorinated water. Let's give it a quick wash. And I waited about, oh, what, about six, six hours before it had absorbed all the moisture. And then I started using the wash. So you can all that, see all that white mould's all disappeared now just with that initial wash of water. So I pop it back in the ripening box again. And six hours later we're going to do the next step. Now this is part way into washing. I've washed it a little bit. That's why this has turned orange. So once dry we begin to wash with a prepared brine solution uh, every three days for three weeks. This is about two weeks into the washing. You can see it's slightly going orange now, or red. And just give it a quick wipe all over. And then once that's done, you pop it back into the ripening box. So in between washings, store it at 13 degrees Celsius in the cheese fridge. Just pop the lid back on there. Now I just store that wash in the fridge during this time. So you can see it's going even more orange there. So after three weeks of washing, then you simply clean the cheese off using a simple brine solution. So just a cup of water and one tablespoon of salt. Just give it a clean because you want to get rid of some of the funky aromas that are on it and dampen down the action of the brevi bacteria linens. And you'll see the cheese starts to dry out a little bit and doesn't produce any mould. If it does, just use a simple brine solution to wipe that off. So we're going to ripen it at 13 degrees Celsius or 55 Fahrenheit at 80% relative humidity for four weeks. Back to Gav. So as you saw on that last shot, the Morbier is turning orange, which is absolutely fantastic. It did puff up a little bit. There's a little bit of, if I knock on it, it sounds a little bit hollow. So there might be some gas development within the cheese, but hopefully now that I've turned it and washed it again, it'll flatten back down. And uh, once we get to the taste test, which will be in a few weeks time, then we'll see what the insides of the Morbier look like. Anyway, I think that could be from my lack of turning. I didn't turn it last week, uh, so the cheese may have just expanded a little bit in the ripening box. Anyway, it's got a beautiful colour. It's got a beautiful ash line through the middle. I think this cheese will be a success. It smells like smelly socks, as a stinky cheese does. But um, I think once it's uh, exposed to the air and... Um, most of that smell goes away and it just turns into a deliciously creamy cheese. Anyway, we'll find out on the taste test what the Morbier looks like. Well, once again, if you want to buy any equipment or supplies, pop over to littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Don't forget that I've got a podcast channel and the link for that is in the description below as well. Well, thank you for watching Curd Nerds and I'll see you next time.